Good morning, friends. Welcome to the Children's Ministry service today. Before we start today's service with praise, can I just really pray for us really quickly? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our God, for being Lord, for being the being that we worship, whom we delight in, whom we praise in, whom we place our trust in. For Heavenly Father, we find no other better place to place our trust. We find no better protection. We find no better guidance, no blessing, no wisdom better than you. So Heavenly Father, in the midst of these oppressive situations and in, in the midst of all this chaos, Lord, thank you for being our God. Thank you for being a God who came to our world. Thank you for being a God who loves us and sustains us and is walking through every single step of our lives, even when we are not aware of it, even when we are not seeking to look after you. So Heavenly Father, as we come before you and seek to worship you and to love you, wouldn't you stir up our hearts? Wouldn't you guide us into greater praise, into true praise and worship? So that everything that we do is not just pleasing to you, but is also enriching and blessing towards us as well. Heavenly Father, we just pray and we humbly seek of this, Lord, that such will be done. We thank you again, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, we praise and pray. Amen. All right, let us all stand up that we may praise God. As we continue in our worship, let's all recite the Apostles' Creed together. Are right, you guys ready? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. 
He descended into hell the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today's passage comes from Acts chapter 6. We'll be reading from verse 8. All the way up to Acts chapter 7, verse 1. So that's our first chunk. And our second chunk comes in Acts chapter 7. And we'll read from verses 51 to 60, which is the end of chapter 7. So again, from Acts chapter 6, verse 8, to Acts chapter 7, verse 1. And then we'll read from Acts chapter 7, verses 51 to 60. So if you don't have your Bibles right now, please go ahead and grab them feel free to pause the video here if you don't have your Bibles in front of you if you do I will read from Acts chapter 6 verse 8 and then I will go all the way up to Acts chapter verse 60 this is God's Word and Stephen full of grace and power was doing great wonders and signs among the people then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen as it was called and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians and of those from Sicilia Cilicia and Asia rose up and disputed with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him before the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man never ceases to speak words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses delivered to us. And gazing at him, all who sat in the council saw that his face was like the face of an angel. And the high priest said, Are these things so? Skipping ahead to Acts chapter 7 verses 51. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. And they cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is God's word, and thanks be to God. Can we pray really quickly before I begin preaching today's sermon? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our God. And thank you for your word whom you have, um, that you have kept throughout history. And now we're reading a small part of it. Heavenly Father, as we read your word, we need to open up all of our hearts to receive what you have to say to us. Help me not to preach anything of human vain wisdom, but help me only to preach the power of the gospel and of the truth that you wish to be communicated. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us and be, as a church and being our God, being our protector and our Savior over the world. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, how many of you like Frozen? How many of you like Avengers? They're two, many, two very similarly different movies, but in my opinion, they're two very excellent movies. And although these two different movies seem to have very little in common, I believe they have a few very important things in common. And one of them is this. There are good guys and bad guys in both films, Frozen and Avengers. And the good guys win. It's not just Frozen or Avengers. If we look at so many movies, games, dramas, stories, the good guys are the ones who usually win, right? And that's not a bad thing, that's a great thing. Because we know that when the good guys win, there's a happy ending. 
Now, of course, now the bad guys like to think they are right. The bad guys believe that if they win, the world will be a better place. And a prime example of that, Thanos. But obviously, if the bad guys win, it, it doesn't bring a happy ending. It actually brings a very sad ending. And so we don't want the bad guys to win. Because if they do win, there is going to be suffering waiting for everyone. So friends, remembering that, can we, can we just think about God for a second? Um, what, who do, you, do you think God's on the good side, or do you think God's on the bad side? I think most of you agree that God is good. That, and I would go even as far to say that God is the ultimate good. Right? But do people who follow God always win? Just like in the movies, how the good guys always win. Do people who follow God always win? Do people who follow God always bring or experience some kind of happy ending? And do people cheer us on for believing and living the right thing? Or do people insult us and tell us we're wrong? Friends, I want all of us to know this. Believing in Jesus, living for Jesus is the ultimate good that we can do. When we live and believe, live for Jesus and believe in Jesus, we're straight in the side of the good guys. There's no doubt about that. But the world doesn't see us that way. The world believes that believing in Jesus, not all of the world believes that believing in Jesus is a good thing. Many people actually believe that believing in Jesus is actually harmful for the world. And also, even in our own lives, when we live for Jesus, it appears, it appears as if we're losing, as if we're experiencing the bad ending. And so we are discouraged and we think maybe following after God isn't being on the good side. Maybe it's being on the bad side. But friends, I want to assure you that even when following after God seems like being on the, being on the losing side, being on the side of the bad guys, following after God is actually winning, even when it seems like we're losing. We'll find out how that's the case by looking at a man named Stephen in today's passage. Now, who is this Stephen figure? What do we know about him? Um, he first appears actually in chapter 6, um, starting at verse, and we're, we're introduced to how he appears in the Bible. So as you guys know, as we have been following along in the book of Acts, the church, that as, as we understand, it started to grow under the 12 apostles. Apostles are Jesus' direct disciples. There were Peter, people like Peter, Jacob, James, and John. And there were 12 disciples because um, Judas, although he suicided, they decided to replace Judas with Matthias. So there were 12 disciples, 12 apostles. And the church started to grow a lot. Um, the preaching was powerful. God was working through the 12 disciples. The church started to grow. And as the church grew, as the church grew it also started to need more help. Um, managing things, taking care of the poor. So these 12 apostles gathered, and they asked the entire church, could you please choose seven people who can help us out? Seven people. So please choose seven people who are very strong in their faith and who are very mature. And these seven people were chosen, and they became the first deacons in the church. And Stephen was one of the deacons. So you can imagine Stephen was a very good person. Um, indeed, in our Bible today, in our passage today, Verse 8 reports that Stephen was full of grace and power. And verse 15 tells us that Stephen's face was like the face of an angel. My friends, let me ask you the question. Would anyone like to kill a man like that, a good man like that? And I believe your answer would be, no, we don't want to kill someone like that. But that wasn't the case. People actually wanted to kill him. If you read through today's passage, Jealous and close-minded people started lying about Stephen. Just read Acts chapter 6 verse 11 to you guys. Then they, these jealous and close-minded people, secretly instigated men who said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. What does that mean? It means that they made people lie by making them say, Stephen is trying to lead us away from God. Now, you can see how that's wrong, right? Stephen wasn't trying to lead people away from God. He was trying to lead people into God. But people believed that lie. So Stephen was brought to a religious trial, and he was on trial by the Jewish religious leaders. Now, friends, let's think about it. Jewish religious leaders, they were like pastors back in the days, right? 
Surely they will understand Stefan and what he's trying to do. Surely they will understand that Stefan is trying to talk about God and leading people to God, right? So they're, they're going to prove, right? And it's not like Stefan's doing anything wrong. He's actually doing everything right, right? He seems well-behaved. He's very mature. He's not angry that he was wrongly accused. He's not trembling in fear that he's going to die. Right? So surely things are going to go well, right? Surely because he's one of the good guys. Not really. Stefan knows at this point if he talks about Jesus, he might die. But even when he knew that, he decides to preach about Jesus to the religious leaders and to the crowd. And he actually starts attacking them, starts exposing their sin. Stefan does this by recounting the history of the Jews and telling how the Jews were always far from God and how they're always sinful and how they've always been rebellious towards them. Um, that's basically what chapter 7 verses 2 to 50 is talking about. I skipped over it because it's long and, and difficult to understand as of now. But let me give you a brief summary of what that's saying. Stephen said, Jews have always rejected God's chosen leaders. From Abraham to Moses and to David and even to the current Jew Jewish religious leaders, the Jewish people have not been faithful to God, but always chose to rebel against God always chose to fight against him and his chosen leaders. They fought against Abraham, they fought against Moses, they fought against David. And people like the Jewish religious leaders always chose to kill God's chosen leaders. And in verse 51 and 52, Stephen drops the bomb. He declares that Jesus was also God's chosen leader, that Jesus was God himself, who the Jews have rejected again and killed, just like how their ancestors were doing all along. Now, friends, was speak, Stephen speaking the truth there? Was Jesus the chosen leader of God? And was Jesus God? And the answer is yes. He's, he's, he's on the right. He's talking about the right things. Jesus was the promised salvation. Jesus was God. Jesus was one who brought heaven on earth. Yet, Jesus was rejected by the Jewish religious leaders and killed by them. So, yes, Stephen was telling the truth. But the people, instead of appreciating that, got mad at him. They were offended by it. They couldn't agree with him, and they couldn't accept being wrong. But we know that the Jewish crowd and the religious leaders were wrong, and that Stephen was right. How do we know that? Verse 55. But he, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. What does this show? God approved of Stephen and what he was saying, and he decided to show himself to him. But Stephen, although he was on the right side, he was killed with stones by the crowd. The future apostle Saul, who will play a very important role later on in our passage, was one of the people who was approved of killing Stephen. Friends, I believe this Bible passage carries an important message for all of us. That even when we live for God, the only true hero of this world, we will seem like we're losing on the outside. That even when we live for God, we will seem like we're losing. Stephen was faithful and wise, and he was on the right side speaking the truth. God always approved of Stephen. Yet despite Stephen's faithfulness, despite God's approval, Stephen was killed instead of winning the people over to God. And friends, just like Stephen, even when we live for God, even when we preach that Jesus is the way, people might not only not accept it, we might not have the happy ending that we want. In fact, the people might actually hate us for doing so. And the people might deride us for doing so. And when we experience that, it might feel like we're losing, that the people don't care, that we're on the wrong side, that God is far away, and we might be tempted to think all of these type of things. But friends, when we're tempted to think that, when we're tempted to believe that, I want us to remember Jesus. Because when we look at Jesus' life, it also looked like he lost. In our eyes, he didn't win against anyone. He died. He fought, and it seems like he died, and he lost. But did he? No. He rose back to life and proved everyone wrong. And all of the Bible sings of how his seeming defeat, his seeming loss, has actually brought eternal victory. 
that his seeming loss has brought eternal victory, that he will win forever, that he has already won forever. And friends, this is the type of mystery that God promises us, that when we follow after him, even when we seem like we're losing, we will win. That when we follow him, even when we seem like we're losing, just like Stephen, we will always win, just like Jesus did. So friends, I want to encourage you, do not be tempted to abandon following after Jesus. Follow after Jesus. Be determined to follow after God, because when you do, God's victory, God's happiness, God's heaven will happen in our lives and to the people around. So remembering that, can we pray for a little bit? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being our God. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who secured the eternal victory, the victory forever that we could not have dreamed of. So Heavenly Father, living for you seems tough at times. Living for you seems impossible at times. Living for you seems like we're on the losing side. But Heavenly Father, when we're tempted to look at that and be discouraged, Help us to remember, Lord, that when we live for you, our victory is assured. It will happen, and there will be a happy ending in the end. So, Heavenly Father, grant us courage, grant us conviction. Help us to follow to the very end of our days. Lord, we thank you for being our God. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, let us now enter into a time of offering. Um, I know we don't... And we can't really physically give as we do during our services, but the purpose is that we will learn how to worship God with all that we have, right? So can we pray this prayer together as we pray every week? Lord, I give my life as an offering to you. I'll pray that now. Lord, I give my life as an offering to you. Amen. Our friends, now let us all rise for our closing praise. And after our closing praise, let us close our worship together with the Lord's Prayer. Before even time began, my life was in His hands. He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls in tears. Let's close together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen.